Good morning Mumbai. Hi, my name is Prakash and my along with my wife Joyce we serve the Kolkata church. Uh you know we have been married for the last 26 and a half years. We have three kids. Our eldest son is 24. Our uh, middle son is 20 and our youngest daughter is 18 years old. I was born and brought up in Mumbai, also known as Bombay. I studied there, I did my graduation there. I became a disciple in Mumbai in 1988 during my final year BCom. I left Mumbai 31 years ago in 1989 as a one-year-old Christian to be a part of the Delhi mission team. Now David and Monica were part of that team as well. In fact, we were all part of the same Bible talk, Lullaby Park Bible talk in Andheri. You know, since then God has taken me to places that I could have never imagined. Delhi, Chennai, Kolkata, Dhaka, back to Delhi and then Kolkata. Christian life is an adventure. And when you are on an adventure, you have your ups and downs. You know, you have uh, it's exciting. Uh, things are not boring. And God has always been faithful to me through the last 31 years of my Christian life. And one of the things that you know, we notice over here is many times we start our Christian life very excited very faithful our faith is all time high we believe that we can conquer the world for christ but somewhere down the line we start getting distracted we start getting attracted to the things of the world we start having desires of this world which gets us off our christian path though outwardly we might go through the motion of being a christian our heart is getting attached to the things of this world and that is what we will be studying today in the book of Luke chapter 12 the parable of the rich fool let's turn our bible to Luke chapter 12 verse 31 onwards oh, sorry verse 31 no. someone in the crowd said to him teacher tell me uh, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me jesus replied man who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you Now what are the issue over here that Jesus was addressing? This was the issue of greed. It looks like a father, the head of the family had died. And after the funeral, the inheritance is normally divided among all the children. But and under the normal circumstances, the eldest son becomes the head of the family. It looks like in this situation, the eldest son is refusing to give his inheritance to his siblings. Basically, Greed has taken over the son that he doesn't want to part with the inheritance. Now, is this something new? No, we read all about this all the time in the news and even in India today. You know, we see children throwing their parents out of their house to get the house, the inheritance, or they kill their parents. We have siblings kill each other uh, for inheritance. Greed is dangerous. Now why is greed dangerous? Because because greed is an intense desire to acquire acquire something. And to get that because the the desire is so intense that we are willing to do anything. We're willing to compromise. We are willing to kill, cheat, lie uh, to get what we desire. And we don't even realize it because we become slave to it. You know, but the danger of greed is it never satisfies us. we get something and then we look for something new in verse 15 jesus says then he said to them watch out be on your guard against all kinds of greed life does not consist in an abundance of possessions you know jesus is warning us to be alert against all kinds of greed you know we all struggle with greed our struggles are different we have we are, you know some we are some of us we are greedy uh, for food maybe for some it could be gadgets the latest gadgets new car owning a house and the problem is that we are never satisfied you know we get that latest gadget then we are looking for something new we get that car then we are looking for a bigger car a newer car a luxurious car you know we get our own home and then we are looking for a bigger home and a nicer home a luxurious home You know, what is the problem with greed? We are never satisfied. We are looking for always something new uh, after we get it. 
And that is what Jesus is warning us. That life is not about collecting possessions. It is not about the one who has the most toys wins. That is the warning of Jesus. Let me ask you a question. You know, is that a struggle for us today? What am I greedy about? What am I, what, what is the intense desire that I have that is consuming me? It is okay to say, oh, if I have this, I'll be happy. But, you know, is it something that you, is consuming you? And if we are not careful, that, that will consume us. That will make us compromise and do things that we might regret later on. Now, let's look at the rich fool over here as he tells the parable in verse 16. It is Jesus says, he told them this parable. The ground of a rich young, rich man yielded an abundant house. Now, the first delusion this rich man had was that he was in control. I am in control. That was the delusion he had. Now, if you notice, it was the ground that yielded an abundant harvest. It wasn't so much the rich man's hard work or talent that brought him the harvest. It was the ground. Maybe he inherited the ground, the, the land from his uh, father. Maybe he bought that land from somebody. But no matter what the situation was, it was the land that was rich and fertile. And that's the reason why it produced incredible harvest. It is so easy for us to get deceived into thinking that, you know, the things that I've achieved is because of my hard work, my talent, my gifts. Forgetting that it is God who gives us the ability to produce well. It is God who gives us the opportunity for all the success that we have achieved. You know, this is something that God was warning the Israelites when they left Egypt as slaves and entered into the promised land or they were traveling into the promised land, God was reminding them not to forget. In fact, let's turn the Bible to Luke chapter, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11 to 18. And let us see uh, what God had to t warn the Israelites, that is, even applies to you and me today. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11 onwards, uh, God says, Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe His commands, His laws, and His decrees that I'm giving you this day. You know, the biggest problem with mankind is loss of memory. We forget all the good that God has done in our lives. And that is the warning that God is giving the Israelites today uh, at that point of time, is not to forget Him. Why is it so important not to forget? Because when we forget God, we fail to observe His commands, His laws, and his decrees. When we forget God, we forget his words. When we forget God, we forget to hold on to his word. We don't think that it is in, that following God and following his command and holding his laws and decrees is that important. We drift away from God and that's the danger of forgetting what God has done in our lives. In verse 12, otherwise when you eat and are satisfied, you know, he talks about having food, enough food to eat, good food to eat. And when you build fine houses and settle down, and it talks about having your own home, a nice home, a place of refuge, uh, a place where you settle down with your family. When you are herd and flocks grow large, it talks about you having a good career, a successful career, where you're secured at your workplace, and your silver and gold increases, and all you have is multiplied. It talks about your wealth. It talks about your savings that you have. How can we, how can, how do we behave when we have food to eat, whole house to stay, a good career that makes us secure, and a good savings? In verse 14. Then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You know, when we Forget all that God has done. You know, our heart becomes proud. When you forget where we came from, our heart becomes proud. When you forget that all that you and I have is blessing from God, our heart becomes proud. And not only that, when you forget the past, it says don't forget the land of slavery. It's telling the Israelites. You know, we too were slaves. We were slaves to sin. We were slaves to our bad habits. We are slaves to our old life. And it was God who forgave us. It was God who set us free 
through the blood of Jesus. It is God who who paid the price to set us free from slave to sin. You know, we got to make sure that we never forget where we came from. Because we because remembering our past helps us to be humble. Not forgetting our past, it keeps us humble. You know, ask yourself this morning. You know, do I remember all the things that I struggled with in the past? Well, what was my life like before I became a disciple? Have I forgotten that? Have I forgotten all the people who have helped me to be successful? Have I ignored God and sidelined God now that I'm doing well financially with all my blessings? You know, let's not sideline God. And that was the danger the Israelites uh, were warned about. Look in verse 14. Uh, sorry, verse 15 onwards. And we, we see over here that there are three roles God played in the life of the Israelites that he plays in your and my life as well. In verse 15 he says, he led you. you know, he played the role of a leader. He led the Israelites. He directed them. He walked with them. He showed them the way to that 40 years so that they will not be lost. He led through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. The second thing role that God played in their life, he was the protector. He protected them in the wilderness. He protected them from snakes and scorpions and the enemies. And verse 16, he gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known to humble and to test you so that in the end it might go well with you. The third thing was God was the provider. He provided them with water out of the rock and manna in the wilderness when nothing was grown. And that is the same three roles he plays with in our lives today. He is the one who leads us. He is the one who protects us. He is the one who provides us. Unfortunately, sadly, we don't realize that. We don't acknowledge him in our life as a leader, as a provider, and as a protector. In verse 17, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. You know, this is a lie that we all believe in. We start believing. And why, why is this a lie? And why is this such an important point over here? Is, you know, when we believe that it is my power, it is my strength, and because of me, the land is produced as well. You know, we start focusing on ourselves. It is, you know, I achieved it. It is because of my hard work. It is because of my talent. And that makes us think that, you know what? I don't need God. You know, I am God. We might not say that, but we might believe that. And that's the lie that Satan wants you and I to believe, that we don't need God. If he can make us believe that, then he has won the battle. Okay? Verse 18. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce well, and so confirms his covenant, which he saw to your ancestors as it is today. Now whether you believe it or not, what God is making it very clear is, it is I, that is God, who gives us the ability to produce well. It is God who gives you the ability to be successful. It is God who has made you and me where we are today. So, let us not forget what God has done. That was the problem with the Israelites. They, it was so easy for them to forget all that God had done in their lives. You know, when we forget God, what we noticed over here is we, in verse 11, we fail to observe His command. In verse 14, we become proud and self-reliant. In verse 14, the second part, we forget that we too a slave uh, to sin. Verse 15, we forget that it is God who rescues us, who protects us, who provides us, who leads us on the journey in, our, in this life. Now what happens if we forget God? You know, our action has consequences. If we choose to obey God, it has good consequences. But if we choose to ignore God or reject God and reject His word and reject His command, then there is consequences too. And in, 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 in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 19 and 20, we see the consequences for rejecting God. Let's read in verse 19 and 20. 
If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify you against I testify against you today that you will be surely destroyed like the nations the Lord destroyed before you. So you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. You know when life is going well, we can fall into the trap of thinking that it is all my effort, my talent, my gift that brought us over here. And of course, sometimes it does play a part, a small part, not a big part in achieving things. But the, but the fact is actually I am not in control of my life. And what is God reminding over here that if we ever forget God and follow other gods and and we might not follow other gods but idolatry is when we put anything ahead of God is an idolatry. And so we might not follow other gods and bow down to them but you know we might follow consider ourselves as God our achievements we might be proud about that we might worship our achievement our worship our gifts worship our talent worship the things that we have accumulated that can become our god so the big question today is do i thank god for all the blessings in my life my achievements and success or do i take credit for it does this make me follow his teachings more and rely on him more or do i feel like i don't need god in my life i am in control and if you think that you are in control you know you are under the same delusion as the rich fool that i am in control let's look for the what is the second delusion this rich fool had in luke chapter 12 verse 17 and 18 he thought to himself what shall i do i have no place to store my crops then he said this is what i i'll do i will tear down my barns and build bigger ones and there i will store my surplus grain The second delusion that the rich fool had was he thought that I can secure my future. The second reason why this rich fool was fool was because he thought that he had the power to control his future. He believed that by building a bigger barn, he could store up his surplus crops and continue to enjoy his wealth till his old age. Now I'm not saying that it is wrong to plan for the future. We need to plan for the future. You know, we need to plan whatever insurance to take care of our family, the medical insurance, the retirement fund. All those things are good, provided it is it has its own importance. When is it wrong? It is wrong when you are so consumed with securing your future that you ignore God. You ignore God's teaching. You ignore His laws and decrees. That's when it is wrong. I remember a few years ago I was talking to a brother who struggled to tithe. And uh, you know I was talking to him and I was trying to help him to see his finances where is he wasting his money or is he spending because he was earning well and still he was struggling to tithe. And as I was looking through his expenses you know more than half his salary he was saving in insurance and retirement fund. And the remaining half of the salary You know he had no, he did not have enough money for his all his important expenses and to tide on it. And he, he was just a 25 year old man, 25 year old brother, but he he was not he was building the future. He was trying to secure the future without giving to God what belongs to God. And so many times you know we can have the delusion that I need to secure my own future. I can secure my own future. and in doing that you know we can stray away from god's commands and god's laws so are you do you struggle with the second delusion do you believe in the second delusion like the rich fool that you can secure your future let's look at the third delusion this man had was 19 and i will say to myself you have plenty of grain laid up for many years take life easy eat drink and be merry the third delusion was i will enjoy my wealth the first delusion was i am in control of my future okay i am in control the second delusion was i can secure my future and now the third delusion this man had was i will enjoy my wealth now this rich man had two false premises okay and what are the two false premises was number one was he thought that he had a long life to live 
and the second premise was that his wealth will make him happy and bring satisfaction and fulfillment don't we all to struggle with the same false premise that i have a long life and i my, and the wealth will make me happy the rich fool was foolish to think that his wealth was everything he thought that as long as he has a long life to live he can enjoy his wealth and we also have bought foolishly into the lie of a culture where we believe that money can buy happiness status fame and bring us satisfaction but if we notice around us we see a sad fact that all around us people are becoming more and more anxious more and more fearful more and more worried more and more stressful and what do they do they can't handle the challenges of this life and they take the easy way out by committing suicide a lot of young people even in the newspaper lately have been committing suicide and these are not poor people i'm talking about who have challenges to survive and who are committing i'm talking about people who are successful actors recently who have committed suicide people who are wealthy who have committed suicide we have tiktok stars who have committed suicide in the beginning of this year you know as a family you know we did not have a good start for the family in fact the the ending of the last year on 25th of december uh, joyce's nephew a 30 year old nephew a successful guy he was a marine engineer had a good job he was traveling around the world uh, he had in wealth he had secured his life at the age of 30 already had a, a beautiful ho- home in, in in bangalore life was great and yet on 25th december early in the morning uh joyce's nephew committed suicide and this really broke joyce's heart she was in total she she broke down because this was the same boy when he was born you know joyce brought him to church when she first came to church first visited the church in delhi she carried this small little baby uh to church and at the age of 30 you know when we heard that he committed suicide it just broke us all down you know he had everything going great he had well he had career uh, he was successful in the eyes of the world but there was still something missing for him to take that step but even but that was not enough a few days ago you know one of joyce's close friend that she grew up in manipur her husband committed suicide leaving behind a uh, wife and two teenage boys if wealth is supposed to make us happy if wealth is supposed to bring fulfillment why are so many wealthy people committing suicide because there is something missing there is something that wealth cannot give us there is something that wealth can't meet our needs let us see what is that something let's see what jesus have to say what is the solution in luke chapter 12 was 20 But God said to him you fool this very night your life will be demanded from you then who will get what you prepared for yourself You know Jesus quickly tells you fool you will die this very night then who will get everything you worked for Even though we know that one day we all have to die no one expects that we for us to die early No one is thinking that you know what tonight today is my last day. Now imagine if today was your last day. How would you spend your last day? You know would you waste your last day or would you make the best use of your last day? Would you be spending more time accumulating more wealth or would you be doing what is most important? You know Jesus reminds us that death changes everything. And knowing that we will die should help us to rethink our priorities should help us to get our priorities right rather than spending time investing in bigger bonds for ourselves jesus is reminding us to invest in our relationship with god that will last in fact in verse 21 he says that yes a person is fool to store up earthly wealth but not have rich relationship with god so brothers and sisters you know the fourth the harsh reality is everything will pass this too will pass when you die what will happen to all your plans 
your possessions your wealth your dreams what will happen to them you know we need to get our priorities right because we have a short time on this earth everything will pass this too will pass and if you're having a good time on this earth enjoy while it lasts because that too will pass and if you're having a hard time if you're having a bad time if you're having a difficult time then i want to encourage you also that this too will pass your difficult time will also pass nothing is permanent on this earth the good time will pass the bad time will pass that's the harsh reality so what's the solution let's look in verse 21 of luke chapter 12 for the solution that jesus gives us this is how it will be for whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards god what does it mean to be rich towards god what does god consider as rich you know imagine you know you are traveling to a foreign country but you're carrying indian rupees and you're trying to buy something in the, a foreign country with the indian currency you know that country will reject that currency because they want their own currency they consider the other currencies uh, not valuable and so you have to convert your indian rupees to the currency of that country before you can make any purchase in the same way you know in in god's kingdom you know the things of this world is considered as rubbish and in this world the thing that god considers valuable is considered as rubbish for example in god's kingdom gold silver wealth possession is useless it has no value you know god for god it it is unfortunately it has no value all the gold the silver your education your materialistic thing has no value but all the thing that god considers the world considers it useless let's look at what it says you know as jesus says one's life does not consist in abundance of possessions in luke chapter 12 verse 15 in luke chapter 12 verse 21 it says so it is with those who store up treasure for themselves but is not rich towards God. So what Jesus is talking about is rather than being rich in the worldly way, we need to be rich towards God. How can we be rich towards God? Let's look at what Jesus had to say in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. According to Jesus, when we seek first his kingdom, when we seek a relationship with god when we give importance to god and his command when we give importance to righteousness and holiness then that is being rich towards god so do i is seeking god and his kingdom still first in my life is that still my first priority or has that taken a back seat in my life as i seek other things in this world In in 1st Timothy chapter 6 verse 11 you know we see what Paul tells Timothy and this is referring to greed it's referring to be content it is referring to in the love of money and in verse 11 it says but you man of god that is Timothy flee from all this and the reference is love of money or greed flee from money flee from love of money flee from greed and pursue righteousness godliness faith love endurance and gentleness so what god is saying pursue righteousness but in today's world righteousness has no value if you are righteous the world is going to take advantage of you pursue godliness that concept is missing in today's world we look around the world today there is no godliness there is evil everywhere pursue faith in god which is looked down by the world as a sign of weakness and yet you know having faith in god is valuable in god's eyes pursue love it has lost its meaning in the world today and yet the bible says to love god with all our heart mind soul and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves pursue endurance or perseverance that is missing in the world today today people are not willing to persevere people are not willing to endure people just want to quit at the first challenge that comes their way pursue gentleness you know the world considers gentleness as a sign of weakness that if you are a gentle you are a weak person 
and yet these are the qualities which is also the fruit of the spirit that makes us rich towards god so today in conclusion you know let's not be like the rich fool who believed in the lies of satan who was disillusioned into thinking that he was in control that he can make his future secured and he has a long life to enjoy his wealth because the harsh reality is everything will pass the good time will pass the bad time will pass death will come unannounced and suddenly and so many of us are not prepared to die so how can we be rich toward god don't store up things for yourself without being rich towards god and how can we do that by seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness what does god consider valuable is the fruit of the spirit let's keep growing in the fruit of the spirit love joy peace compassion kindness gentleness and self control control let us grow in the fruit of the spirit in increasing measures and as we grow in the increasing measure these are the things that god considers valuable amen so in conclusion have i been the rich fool absolutely on many occasion i have been a rich fool you know i know that god is in control but when i face challenges when i face situation in my life you know i forget that god is in control and i th- i start taking control of my life i think that i can control my situation i think i can make my future secure i think that you know all the things that i am running after will make me happy but the sad truth is that all these things are temporary and what is eternal is god and our relationship with god so i hope we learned something today from the rich fool thank you very much for listening god bless you have a great day a great week amen